our first speaker today in this session is, is Susanna Schröder. We'll talk about uh, ISRU and, and LIPS. So please take it away. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I will give this presentation on behalf of my colleague David Vogt, who uh, led these studies and assembled this nice presentation. And I will talk about LIPS, which is short for laser induced breakdown spectroscopy. Uh, and which is a very suitable and promising technique, not only for in situ exploration of the moon, but in particular, uh, in particular for uh, different aspects of ISRU. And um, this work is an ongoing, uh, is the result of an ongoing collaboration of different institutes and facilities. You can see here from the co-authors. Um, uh, so yeah, next, next slide, please. Um, so this morning we already heard quite a bit about uh, ISRU. Uh, so uh, for ISRU, mostly oxygen and water are in the focus of interest um, and how these can be extracted from the uh, regolith, mostly ilmenite, um, or in the case of water, how the water ice can be spotted, extracted and cleaned. Um, oxygen is of course wanted for breathable air, hydrogen for drinkable water and both, both also for propellants. And uh, also other rock forming elements are of interest um, for material production, such as iron, titanium, aluminum, and so on. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so um, this is a slightly more complex diagram showing some of the steps required for ISRU. And here the uh, intermediate steps are the ones that are actually relevant for us. Next slide. So there's the um, prospecting of the resources. Uh, here we have the detection of the regolith with high uh, ilmenite content, for instance, and the detection of water ice uh, on the lunar surface and in the um, uh, permanent, permanently shadowed regions. Um, we are looking for hydrated minerals. Um, then we have the monitoring of ongoing ISRU processes, um, for instance, beneficiation, um, of the regolith and hydrated minerals, um, reduction uh, of the regolith uh, of ilmenite, the progress of water extraction, and also the progress of further processing, uh, separation, and purification. Uh, next. So all this can be done with LIPS. And so on, on the next slide, some words about how this method actually works. It's a it's a way of uh, optical emission spectroscopy. You have a high powered laser pulse focused on the surface. Um, you ablate a little bit of the material and you cr create a little um, plasma, which is uh, emitting light and then you do elemental uh, analysis. Um, it's nice that it's only optical access, which is required. You can do it in remote distances over several meters and it's very fast. And what's also very nice is that it's particularly um, uh, also um, uh, sensitive to measure light elements such as hydrogen and also oxygen has um, uh, very nice emission lines in the spectra. Um, the interesting emission range of the plasma range is actually from the uh, vacuum UV, um, which is a range that is yeah, accessible on the moon, obviously, uh, up to the infrared. Uh, but typically the uh, the range that we are investigating is from the UV to the near infrared. Next slide, please. So um, yeah, LIPS is not really new for space exploration. There are currently three LIPS instruments active on the surface of Mars. The ChemCam on, on the Curiosity rover is there since 2012. Um, it was the first one. It's followed up by the SuperCam instrument suit, which also uses LIPS amongst other techniques on the Perseverance rover active, active, active since last year. And there's also a LIPS on the Chinese rover. Um, there was already the first LIPS planned for the moon and developed, um, but uh, unfortunately the um, the, the rover from uh, India did not uh, make the landing. Um, and so that would have been the first lips for the moon. Next, please. So um, there are different ways you could uh, have your, your lips instrument, uh, uh, different configurations, different concepts. So for instance, on the lunar rover, where the primary purpose would be prospecting, you could go for mast mounted or arm mounted. This is how rather complex, but you have a high scientific return, not only for ISRU, but also just for investigating um, the uh, surface materials. 
Um, you could think of it also as part of an IFRU payload. So here you would have the primary purpose, for, for instance, for monitoring. Um, you would do frequent measurements of uh, processed samples. And here you could go for a rather simple uh, um, yeah, configuration with low mass and volume. And what's also thinkable is, for instance, a handheld device for human exploration for an astronaut, for instance, um, going to the field uh, and exploring could be used for prospecting, monitoring. But um, yeah, this is rather complex, but also, of course, of high interest due to its uh, very nice uh, versatility. Next. So uh, this is our, um, yeah, the romantic name of the setup is the Moon Dust Chamber. And we're doing all our, uh, yeah, Luna and uh, um, vacuum experiments here. Um, it's actually the result of the uh, Voila payload concept, which was developed in the framework of the Horizon 2020 project, uh, Love Me X, uh, with our partners from uh, LZH and uh, OHB. Um, we can simulate pressures down to uh, one, um, uh, 10 to the power of minus five uh, millibar, which uh, for the LIPS plasma is enough to simulate vacuum such as on the moon. We have a working distance of uh, 400 millimeter. We can cool the sample stage with ni uh, liquid nitrogen and um, the laser gear was de developed uh, as explicitly from LZH um, with the purpose to go on the moon and to uh, look for volatiles actually. Um, the spectrometer covers the range uh, 340 to 900 nanometer, but um, we could also go a bit further down into the UV um, for, yeah, for lunar payload. Next. Um, so we did different kinds of uh, experiments, uh, for instance, uh, the analysis and classification of geologic samples with different um, lunar regular stimulants. Um, we were measuring moon relevant rocks and min minerals such as ilmenite and uh, anorthosite. Um, then we did uh, regular reduction monitoring. We heard about this uh, in the nice talk from Aaron uh, this morning. Um, so we had six samples of the exolith uh, uh, LMS1 in different stages, and we investigated this with LIPS. And what we also did is um, to focus on the, yeah, the volatile detection, water detection, and quantification with different um, experiments, for instance, with water ice mixed with regolith, and also with the hydrated salts uh, mixtures, with, uh, which also have uh, hydrogen content. And we also looking at, at this, all those, of, of course, um, in simulated uh, vacuum in the simulation chamber. Next slide, please. So you see, you can see the dip spectra um, of uh, different materials that we investigated. Uh, what's very nice is that you can really see a variation in the emission lines. Um, uh, many, of, really, I think all of the uh, major rock forming elements are there. Um, we can also see some uh, minor and trace elements. And this uh, most important here was that we were looking at the titanium and, and, and the iron lines, which also scaled and which um, uh, yeah, would allow us to uh, also do some kind of calibration um, also, or kind of say when, when we are detecting ilmenite, for instance. Um, this demonstrates the feasibility. And um, next, please. So this was the study on the regular reduction monitoring. Um, uh, here, the molten salt electrolysis uh, was used, which we already heard before. Um, there were six samples, which were ex uh, which were uh, yeah uh, worked on for different times, um, and we had a look here at the oxygen signal, and we nicely saw that it really scales with the with the time, and we can see here the decrease in this oxygen signal tracking uh, tracking the um, yeah remaining the remaining of the of the uh, lunar simulant. Next, please. Two minutes. Okay, thanks. Um, these are the studies uh, with the water content. You can see here we had a, something like a gradient from a dry lunar regolith going towards very, um, very wet. You can see the hydrogen line is very nicely scaling with this uh, with this water content, and even uh, at the position where it's very dry, uh, where it's dry, and we, we didn't add additional water, you can still see the hydrogen signal showing that we are very very sensitive to this emission line. 
Um, this is just coming from uh, adsorbed water that uh, made, made it into the sample cham chamber. Um, so uh, quantification is possible. They're very sensitive to hydrogen, which is very nice. Next, please. And uh, here's the study with the different hydrated minerals. And also here, uh, looking at the hydrogen peak, we could see a very nice um, correlation uh, here with the water content, which also indicates that quantification is possible. Next, please. Okay, and with this, I'm coming to the conclusion. So um, yeah, for ISRU, LIPS is very uh, a very um, suitable and promising technique for different aspects in the ISRU um, processes. Um, it's very quick, requires only optical access, and it's sensitive to nearly all elements, including hydrogen. And uh, yeah, at uh, DLR, we are currently uh, investigating different payload concepts that can be realized and uh, would be of value for the moon. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Susanna. This is right on time. Um, we do have a question in the chat for you. Um, the question is whether what what range of of K abundances did you measure in your in your tests? K is potassium. That's the yes. question. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, just uh, as, as I uh, showed, we had different uh, simulants. Um, I, I did not actually uh, check on the uh, of, of the range of the potassium for, for this. It was not really in the focus of our study so far, but I can check it up. I mean, uh, just like what's normal in the in the typical uh, simulant materials. Okay, and the question continued um, asking about uncertainties rough uncertainties of the measurements. Yeah, at the moment, we are just uh, doing preliminary uh, studies focusing on the hydrogen. Um, if you could go back to the hydrogen plot, for instance, you see we are uh, uh, the range in, in weight percent, uh, which we covered. Um, so uh, of course, we can go down to uh, for the concentrations. Uh, the problem here, of course, is the experimental setup. As I said before, we have this uh, adsorbed uh, humidity at the surface of the sample, which we are very sensitive to with LIPS. So we see this even if it would be nominally dry uh, regolith. Um, so this is, uh, for us, it's more the experimental challenge in the laboratory, which we have to improve to go, to go down for uh, even smaller concentrations, for instance, for um, hydrogen. Perfect. Thank you very much.